distinguished chief guest mr vijay tadani vice chairman and managing director niit gurugram dr nandini rangaswamy chairperson jaji institutions professor s bala subramanian director jaji center for advanced studies professor p sada sivam director jaji school of management studies guest faculty and dear students good morning it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the annual industry day 2021 let us begin by seeking the blessings of the almighty prayer Thank you. The theme for this year's Industry Day is the impact of digital transformation on industry challenges for management education. A very apt and relevant theme given the current situation. May I now invite our chairperson to welcome the gathering. Good morning, everybody. most respected chief guest mr vijay tadani vice chairman and managing director niit good morning and hello to you uh, vijay from coimbatore uh, we wish you could have been here but uh, unfortunately this is the only way we can do it this year thank you for being with us this morning uh, members of the various of the panel secretary dr yashoda devi principal dr nirmala directors faculty members and students i am extremely glad to welcome our chief guest who graciously accepted to be the chief, to be our chief guest for our annual flag dish flagship event industry day with the theme impact of digital transformation on industry challenges of management education he has allocated his precious time amidst this uh, busy schedule we a very warm welcome to you mr tadani i am extremely pleased to welcome all the panel members and i welcome each and every one present virtually for this event i am glad that this year industry day is happening through virtual mode with eminent speakers from various walks of life and from different countries also this pandemic has thrown our life out of gear and uh, education has been actually the one of the worst affected sectors despite all constraints we have managed and adapted to the situation i think the theme for this industry day is extremely relevant and i hope our students will have plenty of takeaways from this with this brief note let me have the pleasant privilege of welcoming and introducing our chief guest mr vijay k tadani is the vice chairman and md managing director of niit a leading global skills and talent development corporation mr tadani has led the group's globalization efforts taking the niit flag to over 40 countries He is also the co-founder of the not-for-profit NIIT University, established in the year 2009, with the vision of being the role model of learning, research, innovation, and sustainability for the knowledge society. He served as president of the Indian IT Industries Association (MAIT) and as the chairman of the CII Northern Region. He has also served as the chairman of the National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. and under the aegis of the quality control of council of india and as the chairman of board of governors of iit 
Allahabad. Mr. Tadani is serving currently as the chairman of All India Board of Technical, Technician, Technical Education, Technician Edu Education, constituted by AICTE since uh, January 2020. He also serves on the Governing Council of All India Management Association. Until recently, he served on the Board of Governors of uh, IIT Delhi and as the Chairman of the Board of Governors of uh, MN National Institute of Technology, Allahabad, and also CII's National Committee on Higher Education. Mr. Tadani received the recognition of distinguished alumnus from his alma mater, the Premier, Premier Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. In addition, he was honored with the position of economic consultant to Chongqing, world's largest city in the People's Republic of China. With this and this introduction, I once again welcome him and all everybody who are present here virtually, and I hope there will be great sessions and great takeaways from this uh, conference. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Mr. Tadani, once again. Thank you, ma'am. May I now invite our director, Professor P. Sadasivam, to deliver the theme address. Esteemed Chief Guest, Mr. Vijay Tadani, Most Respected Chairperson, Dr. Nandini, Chief Mentor, Professor Balasubramanian, Faculty Colleagues, my dear students, good morning. Industry Day is our annual flagship event. Every year we arrive on a theme of relevance and most contemporary to discuss threadbare with eminent speakers from academia as well as industry. This year our theme is impact of digital transformation on industry and challenges for management education. In a volatile ecosystem, whatever we consider for our curriculum becomes obsolete by the time our students graduate and go out and face the real world. Making them industry ready is our prime objective. And after the breakout of pandemic, everything has turned out to be in a virtual mode which has thrown more challenges to us. Pandemic scenario has thrown a lot of challenges to all types of industries. And when it comes to education, it has become even more challenging. But one silver line in the dark cloud is that this generation is tech native. And hence, going digital has been fine with the students' community at least. So the impact of digital transformation on industry has become a significant focus. And we thought our young women leaders should listen to the views of eminent leaders from industry and academia to understand the scenario much better. Hope this two hours will give them a lot of learning of the current scenario. With this thought and note, I will leave the space for our chief guest to share his wisdom and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I invite our chief guest to address the gathering. Uh, Dr. Nandini Rangaswamy, uh, Chairperson, GRG Institutions, uh, Professor S. Bala Subramaniam, my dear friend, uh, and uh, Professor Sadasivam for uh, giving the theme address. And I think the lady who spoke first was uh, Dr. Vandana uh, Madhav Kumar, I hope. Right. So, first of all, many thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, I have very fond memories of, uh, of my visit to your institution in 2017, August 9, to be precise because the days which extend beyond 24 hours, I keep a track of. That's the day when the return flight from Coimbatore to Delhi got inordinately delayed. <laughs> so I reached next morning instead of the previous night, but 
that nevertheless i think the visit to the institution was indeed memorable and thank you for having me again uh, let's look at the positive side of things this time i do not have to risk the flight back and yet i can be with you so let's make the best of it thank you very much for having me <clears throat> i think uh, uh, you've chosen a very very appropriate subject and my compliments to you uh, uh, for choosing the subject of impact of digital transformation on industry and uh, i will talk a little bit about the digital transformation uh, and obviously anything which we say nowadays has to be said in the backdrop of uh, of uh, covid so therefore covid and digital transformation uh, then i would like to uh, we all have a different understanding of digital transformation i was looking at my notes of 2017 and i remember even that time i described uh, in the detail about what digital transformation was uh, i will not do the same uh, detail but it's important to get reminded because we all have a different understanding and there's no common definition so i'll at least talk about what i am going to i'm going to say on digital transformation the third i would talk a little bit about <coughs> the future of work and uh, uh, while we have been discussing future of work i think a new dimension which has emerged is the future of workplace and i think that has a very important role to play in the way <coughs> management education will particularly look at and then i i want to talk about management education and uh, also uh, to the graduates who are going to or who are uh, students will be graduating this year uh, i think a special message so uh, let me get straight into it uh, so first of all i think uh, enough to say that digital transformation uh, indeed is a is a black swan event which has in one one stroke transformed humanity Uh, made a very very major difference uh and i think uh, the great things which i see is uh, in coimbatore you could always see the stars in the skies in the evening but in delhi we can now see them in delhi as well and uh, and mumbai and i think the impact of uh, pollution and what we were doing to the ecology of the of the of the of this world was definitely uh, one thing the second is uh we can see uh we can see the jungle coming on the road because there were no humans on the road so you could see some very interesting birds and animals and therefore suddenly you were living as a part of the rest of the world i see that as a positive we looked at uh, a new way of working so work from home is a norm we are i'm still working from home most of the time i should say learn from home children have just started going to schools and colleges and institutions have just opened uh, uh shop from home i th i don't think we go to a shop anymore and uh, and uh, then even get medicine or uh, medicine from home so you get treated at home shop from home everything gets delivered so in a way it's a, it's a new life but yet i think we miss uh the human contact and that's what brings us together uh there are uh, the whole digital technologies and the impact that they will have on society was long debated and uh, i think the world was divided in three parts uh there were early adopters uh who were i call the bootstrappers or pioneers uh and uh, uh they were chugging away away and trying out new things there was a second category which was a very large category uh which was fence sitters they did not know whether they should or they should not and then there was a fairly large number of naysayers who said no 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 they digital technology digital transformation has no role to play i think with one stroke in 3 months time everybody is a firm believer of digital transformation so one of the most positive things which covid did was this took this argument off the table 
And I think there are industries who have benefited in different ways from this change. The early adopters obviously had the benefit and uh, uh, they had digital technologies in their DNA. And then I think the, the migrants who have adopted technologies on, the, on whatever they were doing currently, I think have, uh, have benefited in a variety of ways, good to not so good, depending on how they have used it. So a lot of churn, but a lot of excitement, a lot of uncertainty, but a lot of opportunity. <clears throat> So, uh, in this backdrop, I want to define digital transformation once before I get into the future of work. Uh, the first stage when digital technologies came, and I think the most important thing happened when 1981, uh, the personal computer came, when computers moved from glass domes onto people's desktop, a process called digitization started happening. We started digitizing records and uh, and data and uh, and uh, and maps and and i think the the real emphasis was on somehow put it in a digital form what those efforts were came in useful in this time but not exactly caused a strategic difference to the organization the second stage was i call digitalization when a particular process got digital but only a process, one sliver in the organization uh, uh, got digitized uh, or digitalized. And uh, the third stage, which is what we are now discussing, is digital transformation, where just about everything that the organization does is transformed. And new ways of doing business, new ways of working, new processes come in, which transforms the organization. So just to give you an example uh, of each stage, uh, the first stage was when we took the maps and digitized them, right? That was map digitization. But all that could happen was you were able to see them on the screen. The second stage was when Google Maps came, when an intelligence got built into it, that you use the map to find the direction to go from one place to another. But only one process. The rest of your life was still running normally. The third stage is when companies like Uber came who use the maps and have created a new business of taking people and stuff from one point to another. You know, they, they created the transportation of things and human beings from one place to another. And I think you can see the profound impact that digital transformation has caused. What is digital technology that we are referring to? In the first stage, in addition to all that we know of, uh, it was to, the term that was used was SMAC, uh, social, marketing, analytics, and cloud. Social media, digital marketing, uh, business analytics, and cloud computing. Uh, I think these were four foundational technologies. We are now in the second stage when we are discussing art artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, blockchain, robotics, and when all these things get applied in a positive mix to cause a change, that is digital transformation. That is truly digital transformation. And I think one intermix which is very prevalent is Industry 4.0, which is what everybody is talking about. Industry 4.0, which is making a big difference. AI has a huge promise, and there were a lot of a uh, lot of debates on that. I think one very recent example of AI which the students will relate to is the uh, JEE, the Joint Entrance Examination of IIT, where they used artificial intelligence to feed, to see whether they, uh, anybody was impersonating in the new digital form of the test. And they actually detected of, of, out of 650,000 students who took the test, 56 students whose faces resembled those of toppers of 2019 and 20. So somebody was impersonating and they caught 56 people based on artificial intelligence. Uh, why did people get excited about digital transformation? Uh, I gave you an example of Uber, uh, the largest cab company in the world 
does not own a car. The largest uh, uh, hotel property company in the world, Airbnb, does not own a single property. The largest store in the world, Amazon, does not have a shop. Well, they do have now some shops. The largest publisher in the world has never written a, 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 a word by themselves, which is uh, Facebook. And the largest encyclopedia of knowledge uh, has not written a single word themselves, that is Google. Now, these are promises of digital transformation of new businesses. How did some of the existing businesses transform themselves? I think the most telling way that the existing uh, uh, businesses transformed themselves was what is known as hyper-personalization or market of one, which is they started making their product which were suited. When you went to buy shoes from a Nike store, you could buy one of the five or six or eight models of the shoes. But now the shoe that you can buy it will customize itself as you start wearing it and it sees the pressure of your heel and the, and the way you run and the way you walk and automatically adjust, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the hardness of, of the rubber or the cushioning effect and so on and so forth to make sure that you get the right feeling. So those are some great examples and hyper-personalization is the new term which came for businesses that transform. So now when we look at the, in this backdrop of the future of work, we always said in future of work five years ago, five years ago when I came, I said the job that exists today, 50% of these jobs will not exist in the next five years. I think that has happened faster than, faster than five years. And now it will happen even faster. So the new jobs that are getting created and the old jobs that are getting replaced, unfortunately, one of the threatened jobs is that of a manager. The manager in the middle, the bottom part of the job, which is people who used to do the heavy lifting will still remain the same and they will be required. The people at the top who are to develop strategies will also be required. In fact, you will need much more strategic inputs. But the people at the bottom, uh, in the middle, whose job, whose job was actually to manage things and do some processes that applied a certain set of rules and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and procedures, those are the jobs which will get threatened. So, in this backdrop, it is important to understand what are the few changes that are happening. And this is a recent McKinsey study, so I'm quoting from there. Uh, one is automation and artificial intelligence, AI, will be an important ingredient of just about every work that we can do. Anything that can be automated will be automated. Anything that we can apply an artificial intelligence on, we would apply. Why? Because we want to free up our mind for a higher order thinking. And if that is what is required, then that is a skill which management graduates have to have, which will be at premium. The second is the high wage occupations will increase. The low wage occupations will go away, but then you have to qualify for high wage occupations. The third is in addition to technology skills, which just about everybody will need, what will become more important, and I will talk more about it, is the social and emotional understanding. And therefore, behavioral sciences and liberal arts will play a larger role in the life of, uh, uh, of, of every single uh, professional. Innovation and the ability to innovate will, will get a premium. Knowing how to do the same thing well will not get premium. And therefore, organizations which can demonstrate or individuals which can demonstrate an ability to take risks, uh, I think those are the uh, abilities which will play a role. Ethics will have a new meaning now because at this point of time, 
the the hardware the software and the ethics ai has has lot of questions on ethics uh in one sense we, our whole focus in the first stage of industrial revolution was on creating scalable production capability building larger and larger factories the new word which is coming on the scene is scalable variability how are you able to to make the size of your uh, enterprise in such a manner that you are able <coughs> you are able to to make it smaller or larger as you go along i think the most important thing which will happen is who's your coworker as as we go out now the coworker will be partly remote partly in office will be multiple generations those who were born before 1982 those who were born after 1982 and those who were born after 2000 and these three generations think differently right they are known as uh, millennials centennials and all that are you able to hear me uh, everybody are you still able to hear me yeah 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 sure oh all right okay uh and uh, i think the last issue is one important element of our workforce uh, will be the gig worker the gig worker is one uh, you always had people working for life but now you would have to get used to developing people who would not work with you for more than 4 months or 6 months this is not to say there will be no, nobody who will work for life there will be people who will work for life but gig economy will have a major role and that's how scalable variability will also happen in this backdrop let us look at management education so for management education i do want to go back to a little thought process very early in, uh, in the beginning of industrial revolution somebody defined the five m's of management which was men which was to do with labor machines which was to do with the machines so management of men personnel management management of machines industrial engineering or production management management of materials materials management the third m management of methods operations research and management of money which was finance management these were the components of management education each of these components stand change now men have been replaced by robots so the labor has no meaning right has meaning but less than meaning machines is no longer the lathes and the and the presses that we had machine is a simple personal computer just about in fact more than a personal computer is a smartphone and maybe by the time i finish speaking it's your watch which will be the or the or the spectacles you are wearing that will be the that will be our machine materials we have moved from the age of atoms into age of bits so the material is data raw material is data methods the methods were creating a fail fail safe system the method that we have to now adopt is a fail fast system fail fast and move on that's the new term of image uh, of the economy and the word money also frankly is being questioned so i'll not get into that philosophy but you know about the countries who don't care about money our neighboring bhutan they manage their pro- uh, they they measure their prosperity with happiness so they have gross national happiness in con- contrast to gross domestic product there is definitely a feeling that this this elusive money that we have all all been chasing is that really causing all the satisfaction and happiness that we were looking at so i am not going to so i am saying all five elements are challenge but a sixth element which has now emerged which is that of human mind the sixth m of management is the human mind and mind and how you manage the mind and how you use the mind to come up with innovative things i think will be the ability at premium 
So in this backdrop, I think the national education policy has come at a very opportune time. In fact, the other day, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, who also who's the author of national education policy, we are also blessed to have him as uh, the chancellor of the university that I, I am representing right now, the NIT University at, at the campus actually. He was speaking to us and I, in his introduction, I said, I don't know if COVID came first or NEP came first. It looks like NEP was designed for COVID times, right? And uh, uh, the important issue is all these elements that we are talking of, holistic learning, flexibility of entry and exit, and course correction, ability to change your mind, usage of technology in education, respect for environment, human values and diversity to play a premium role, and addressing the societal issues in addition to the industry and technology issues, I think are the abilities that new age professionals have to build. So in this, with NEP giving us a license to change ourselves, I think management education has a great opportunity on the following dimensions. Again, not my original thoughts, these are thoughts which I have picked up from various places and, of course, a little bit of experience. One, I think every management graduate would need digital technology skills. Not become an expert, but need a working knowledge of digital technology skills. Social, marketing, analytics, cloud, AI, machine learning, NLP, Automation, how RPA, or robotic process automation, these are in important gradients of management education. Second, which is done very often, and I know in the fine institutions such as yourselves, many of these things are being done and are done well. Uh, Cross-cultural communication, which is collaboration and cross-cultural communication. Because many times you will not see your fellow worker for, for, for years together, and many of them you would not have met. How do you work with somebody whom you have not had uh, a coffee chat with? Innovation, design thinking, and, dis and decision making using design uh, will be the third important ingredient, which is the design mindset. Adaptability. I think the case studies that we have used in management Frankly, now, COVID case studies are the case studies to be used. All those case studies have lost their meaning in many, many ways. And maybe of many of those have lessons in that, uh, which we can derive from here. Uh, industry and workplace will play a very major role because workplace is evolving and so is the, uh, so is the education. And I think it is very important for them to work together and therefore, Education will have to have part time spent in the in the in education part in the industry, back to education, back to industry. In fact, in this university, we run an MBA program uh, where the uh, uh, people do uh, one semester in the campus, one in an industry, then back to third semester in the campus, and fourth in the industry, and finally they put the whole thing together as their experience and portfolio, which is what makes them very different manager. Uh, ability to use business tools will be the fifth, computational ability. Uh, sixth is institutional product uh, projects and social immersion. Very important to work with communities aside. You can see the difference between haves and have-nots has increased. Okay. Self-development, wellness, fitness, I think these were areas that perhaps have taken side, uh, 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 side seats, so I think they have to come. And lastly, human behavior, which I talked a lot about. In this backdrop, the role of the teacher will change. It has been changing. The teacher, we have been saying, is no longer the sage on stage, is a guide on the side. In this, in this case, that guide on the side is, would not be more valid. Second, practitioners have to play a larger role in professing, and professors have to play a larger role in practicing. 
So we need we need to make sure that practice and uh, education work together. And lastly, the teacher has to be a co-learner, not a teacher, but a co-learner, because the teacher is also learning. And in this, the educational management system that has to be evolved has to be blended. I don't believe a full digital education is a reality because human contact is important, but a full physical education, physical format of education is also not going to happen. So blended is the way. How much of blending? And that, I think, is the design that each institution will evolve. The second is the balance between institution and industry, which I already talked about. Learning pedagogy will have to change. Uh, in our university, we have a center for research in education technologies. And I think some path breaking things we are discovering when we use the blending, because things which we could not do and we had taken for granted we cannot do in the classroom or in the campus or in our learning can now actually happen. So the mantra is practice as you learn and learn as you practice. If you can do that, I think you would be very successful managers who would be at a premium uh, compared to the rest of the industry. Now, quite obviously, with so many changes, one word in the graduates' mind who are going to graduate this year is what will happen to me. My term is over. What will I do in the industry? So first of all, I want to tell you, you are at least three months or six months ahead of others. Imagine those who landed in the industry last year. They were not at all prepared. You still have six months to prepare because now it does not take very long to learn. There are many, many, many methods by which you can learn, get your technology skills, get yourself a design mindset, at least start practicing, start learning to fail fast, collaborating, but more importantly, if you build strong human skills, I think you have a great future. So I wish you all the best. I wish you a wonderful industry day. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, and I look forward to the next opportunity of meeting you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very in insightful and informative speech, sir. Thank you very much. As the coordinator of the event, I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. I, on behalf of the Institute and my own behalf, I thank Mr. Vijay Tadani for readily accepting our invitation and sparing his time to share his thoughts with us today. Thank you, sir, once again. We are grateful to all the panelists for agreeing to, taking, to take time off the busy schedules to be with us to share their thoughts and perspectives. I thank our chairperson for always, always supporting and encouraging us. I express my sincere thanks and heartfelt gratitude to Professor Bala Subramanian, Director GRGCAs, for his able guidance. Thank you, sir. It is uh, because of his detailed, um, uh, his, his ability to give importance to details and ensure that the program uh, goes through uh, and uh, we leave no stone unturned. And um, uh, it is because of that that I think this program is uh, going on successfully. Thank you, sir. Uh, and we are also grateful to him for agreeing to moderate the session. Thank you once again. My thanks to our director, Dr. P. Sadasivam, for his support and encouragement. Thank you, sir. I express my gratitude to, us, to all my uh, uh, faculty colleagues and especially to the chief technology manager, Mr. Ganeshan, and his team for all their help and support in organizing this event. I would like to acknowledge the contribution of Mr. Arun Kumar and thank him for his creative inputs and support. Thank you. I cannot thank enough my colleagues, uh, Satyapriya and Kavita, for their help in, all, in organizing this event and taking care of all the technological details. I extend my thanks to my colleagues for their cooperation and support. Finally, I thank all our guests and students for their attention. Thank you. The panel discussion will sh start shortly at 10.30 uh, 30 to 10.35. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I log out. <laughs>